Hello data fans, in today's video I'm sharing with you the newest updates to Streamit 1.20 and 21 from global secrets configuration to a revamped ST Health. There's a lot to cover, so let's dive right into it. In situations where you need to display your Streamit app through the HTTPS protocol, you know, because you're passing credentials or OpenAI keys, the only way of doing it, and still recommended way of doing for production, is to do SSL termination in your reverse proxy or load balancer like Nginx or HR proxy in front of your streaming apps. With Streamit 1.20, there's a new configuration option you can pass in the config tunnel file or through environment variables to, to point to your certificate. So now you can create your self-signed certificate and keeper with the OpenSSL toolkit for local usage on Linux or, or get one from the certificate authority like Let's Encrypt. With this configured, your app will now deploy with the HTTPS protocol and you'll feel safer. If you didn't know, you're able to embed deployed Streamit apps into your own web pages using an iframe by adding the question mark on that suffix. This way you're able to play with your Streamit app in the web page and still keep the functionality of your website like social media banner or Google Analytics. You can use different embed options from the following list. You're able to re-add the top padding, you're able to disable scrolling or overwrite the light or dark theme that your browser is setting for you. These embed options or embed suffix cannot be set from the experimental set and get query parameters. You can't have your app control how it is displayed in the iframe. The runner fast reruns flag was introduced in 1.9 to run a Streamit rerun request in your new script execution thread instead of reusing the same one for all of the reruns, which, you know, was blocking it sometimes and then just made it explode. It is now enabled by default. So you can still disable it through configuration, especially if your app is being used by thousands of users at the same time, because this could generate an enormous number of concurrent threads and make the machine actually slower. The hamburger menu had a bit of a cleaning with links to Streamit Help and Streamit Cloud being removed. Links to report a bug and get help are also hidden by default. You now have have to explicitly state report a bug and get help links in the set page config to get them to appear again. I do think it's good practice for you to add them to point to your GitHub repos, by the way. Sometimes if you have slow or unstable network, you try to load an app and get an error on the, on the initial connection process. And then you had to reload the app until you got all of the assets in time. To mitigate this problem, the ping and WebSocket timeouts are now far more forgiving. Like I think it's 15 seconds, by the way. It also means that you need to wait 15 seconds before realizing that the app it actually doesn't work, but please think of the people like me that analyze and check streaming apps in the subway and don't have a lot of network, okay? ST Divider makes its appearance. It's basically ST Markdown of three lines. You could even code it yourself this way if you want it. It's basically the same as monkey patching Streamly to add a function that adds a Markdown protobuf containing the uh, slash 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 string, not slash slash, but dash dash. Is it dash dash, by the way? Are you tired of copy-pasting the secret file with your OpenAI key from one project to all of your other projects? Well, with Streamit 1.21, you can store it in your user profile folder for global access by all your apps. Secrets local to your folder will also override global secrets, so feel free to use different OpenAI keys per project. Oh, there was a contribution from Thiago, one of Streamit's founders. This is a must try. Uh, it's about, what is it about, by the way? <laughs> Thiago has added many new functionalities to ST Help to help coding Streamit apps in a more interactive way by making it able to analyze the content of Python object in real time. ST help now shows the name of the variable or the expression, its type, its doc strings, and specifically the members that you can call on this function. ST.timeInput now has the keyword step. Instead of having like a 15 minutes interval between your time, you can now set your own 30 minutes interval one hour interval, 57 minutes interval. It's also possible to use a date time time delta, which 
is a little bit clearer than multiplying seconds by 60 to have minutes. Most text elements can now display a tooltip through the help keyword. It's always a good thing to add a small description to a very strange title. Regarding titles, headers and subheaders, by the way, you know, when you write them, they usually have anchors on the left. So when you select one, you can use that URL to scroll to this header when necessary. Well, if you don't like those anchors, they can now be hidden. So if the anchor keyword is set to false, the anchor disappears. st.pyplot now has a used container width. Beforehand, it would always fill the container width or, or the column width. But now you can control the fixed size width on your own by disabling the used container width. ST code can now display line numbers. So I, I think it's useful for long snippets of code. Data frame accepts time period now. That's nice for those who, who do group by dates in a data frame and need to specify or display quarters or, or semesters, for example. WebP images are now allowed in the static folder files with JPEGs and PNGs and GIFs. Yay, and next we'll get videos, right? Right? The history back button now works on multi-page. Thank you, Yuichiro, for this. And reruns don't add any state to history. So no more 10, 50 rerun states in your back hour. Your browser history won't be a mess anymore. Those are the latest updates in Streamlit. I initially wanted to bundle three releases instead of only two, but the coming updates look like big ones. So those two were more of a fixing long standing issues that gained back some attention through GitHub issues. I'm not part of the Streamlit dev team, but I do share feedback to them whenever multiple people point out to similar issues. They also monitor GitHub issues with a lot of thumbs up. So that's a good way to get a chance to prioritize some of them. If you like those updates, don't hesitate to like this video and then write down any additional feature requests that you want in the comments. Remember, comments save feedback space, okay? I'll see you around. Bye!